Hey y'all, I get this question all the time. I'm out and about, people are like, oh my God, you're a rhinestone supplier. This is the type of business I have. I'm trying to get to this level. What do I need to do in order for my business to grow? Can we guess? Students, raise your hand. Okay, it's for free too. It's called consistency, okay? Consistency will always win. Consistency gets you ahead. Consistency allows you to win because everybody else quit. They been gave up. It got hard. They said, I done had enough. <laughs> I quit. But a consistent person says, I'm going to keep going regardless of how it looks right now. I'm preaching and I feel like I'm in church. You cannot quit. I do not care what it looks like. Be consistent. Because I remember not long ago, a few years ago, I was working at my house. I didn't have a warehouse. I didn't have the tools that I needed to start a business like I have now. I didn't know what it looked like. I didn't know what a supplier, what, how I could find a supplier easily, okay? I didn't know how to build a team. I've always been a leader, but I didn't know what it looked like to have a team of my own with my own company. But it's because I remained consistent that I now have this company that people admire. And now I truly get to walk in my purpose and I truly get to enjoy doing what I do. And that is helping other people see that they can do the same. Now, I am a rhinestone supplier. I sell rhinestones. I'm a bling artist. But the core of who I am, I'm a businesswoman. I like people, I'm, I'm a businesswoman. I love business. I could talk about business. I could tell you what kind of business you need to be starting. If this is your hobby, you can turn that hobby into a profit. Okay? I'm a businesswoman. In business, you cannot afford to ever, if you're trying to grow your business and your desire is to get to the next level, you can't afford to ever stop being consistent. You hear it all the time. Consistency is key. Consistency is free. That's the truth. That's why I'm ahead. That's how I got this far. And I'm not even where I want to be. This is not all God has for me. I know it's not. It can't be. Because he's so much bigger than this, girl. He's way bigger. Way bigger. So I'm not even settling for this. This is a huge blessing. But this is not all that God has for me. My, what God has for me, there's a lot of more people that I can influence and help. I desire to give jobs to way more people than I've been able to afford the opportunity to now. I want to bless people. I want people on my team working for me. I want to help other people build their own team. I want my vision for what I desire at Crown Crystals alone is so big. And I pray that God allows me to see that happen in 2023. I'm going to keep being consistent. I am going to keep showing up. I'm going to keep doing my research. This next big vision that I have for my company, it requires a lot of consistency. It requires a lot of hard work. And guess what? Somebody's going to look up one day and they're going to see this big, huge thing that I've done. And they're going to be like, oh my God, how did you do it? I remained consistent. It was not easy, but I did not give up. Many of you have what you need already. You just be quitting all the time. You can't quit, girl. Big dog. Man, sir, you can't quit. I do not care if it does not feel like it's working. I don't care if it does not look like it's working. I don't care if you don't, if you think you're going crazy, but you know God has called you to this specific business, if you know that that's a part of who you are, a part of your purpose, you you for sure cannot afford to stop being consistent. 
You owe it to yourself. You owe it to the people that you're supposed to help along the way. You owe it to God for entrusting such a huge task to you. This is huge for me. This is a huge task. To my employees, I'm not just their boss. I'm a mentor. My, some of my college students that work for me, I'm like the, the I, I don't, I don't, y'all been not calling me y'all mama. I'm not their mama. I'm, not, I'm too young to be y'all mama, girl. <laughs> no, but I'm like they, they auntie or they big sister, okay? I give them sound advice from a godly woman's perspective, you know? I had people to talk to when I was in college, and I know that they have people to talk to, too. For certain topics, I don't desire, I didn't desire to go talk to my mama about when I was in college. That was my mama. I didn't desire to go talk to my family. I needed another person that I trusted that I could talk to about specific issues. Not that I was out there doing, you know, I was a wimp. You know, I ain't really, I ain't do nothing in college. <laughs> I, I did not live the the normal college life, like going to parties. I never went to, the only party I ever went to in college was a casting. <laughs> I was, I was in a play I was in acting in a play, had the lead role, and we had like a, a, a cast party. So I guess that was the only part out, you know, I wasn't out there. Sometimes I didn't need to talk. And certain things, I just didn't feel, even though me and my mom have a relationship where I can go to her and talk to her about things, I didn't feel comfortable going to talk about specific things. So I say all that to say, I now get to be that person that my employees can come talk to. One of my employees, when we had Black Friday sales, we they worked a lot of overtime. And I enjoyed cooking for my family. Um, and so I cooked, my husband cooked them steak one day, ribeye steak, and I, I cooked like potato sides. And then the next day I cooked a big pot of gumbo and I brought it to the warehouse to them. One of my employees texted me back and she said, well, she texted me and she said, you don't understand how much I love and appreciate you and your husband. Yeah, Y'all are like family to us. And we are grateful because you feel like the sense of home that I miss when I'm, you know, they're here, you know, in college, going to school, coming to work. And for them to say that I'm like, I remind them of being home, my home cooked meals. That means a lot to me because my purpose is being fulfilled. I'm not just here to be this big mean boss. I'm not here to just say, come do your job, go home. I used you. You did what I needed you to do, go ahead about your business. No, I desire to speak life into them. I enjoy to show them what it is through my actions, through the way I live, through the way I carry myself. I desire to be an example of what a real woman looks like, a godly woman looks like. If I had not remained consistent, I would not have the opportunities that I have today. My employees mean way more to me than just a check off the, uh, you did your job, you fulfilled the orders, thank you. No, my business even is not structured, just I want your money and go. My business is structured around being able to serve those in this community and beyond through witnessing through an order like who would have thought i didn't even know that's what god had for me i just got caught up into i like this kind of stuff i want to make it and now people want to buy it and i'm gonna sell it and i naturally sent out a uh, scripture with my packages even before i became a rhinestone supplier when i was just a bling artist i always sent out scripture even when i had my other um, businesses and college and stuff on the back of my business cards like I still have the same scripture that I still use today Matthew 6 and 33 which is my favorite scripture that scripture is still on the back of old cards that I had when I was in college not even in this business I didn't realize that there was a part of my voice me telling other people who Jesus is remain consistent your, your consistency will lead you to your destiny Ooh. That was good. Oh, that's like a preacher. Your consistency will lead you to your destiny. Will you remain consistent? Or do you plan on giving up? Do you plan on watching other people win? Your consistency is not for you alone. Your being obedient to the call of remaining consistent in your business and life 
you know you're going to reap a great reward. The only way to lose is if you quit. You have to remain consistent. Now, you may start in this specific place, in this specific business, and God might move you over to something else. That's a part of your path. It's a part of your lane, a part of your journey. It's how God desires for you to get there. So it might not even look the same. You might have started with one business, but now you're at this business. Did you give up though? Did you quit? Did you say, oh, this one didn't work, forget it. I don't have, because I, I, I've had many businesses that did not work. This one worked. Crowned crystals worked. Crystal glaze worked, okay? My personal brand, me helping other people in business, other entrepreneurs, it works. But what if I would have stopped? What if I would have quit in college? What if I would have quit right before uh, I started Crown Crystals, the last business that I had? I just knew I was going to be, uh, um, I got a I got a sewing machine. I started doing embroidery. I thought I was going to be making baby bibs and christening things. And I was learning how to embroider. I had my machine. I just knew I was about to open me up a baby business. <laughs> Didn't work. That's not what God had for me. But I, I was not like, I quit. I, this is not for me. None of the businesses that I've ever done, none of them have ever worked. You you haven't you haven't you haven't reached the one that works yet. You have to go find it. You have to remain consistent. You have to continue to do the research. Consistency. What does consistency look like to you? It means that you endure, that you keep going, that you don't give up. It it sounds so cliche. It sounds far out of reach it sounds like you know does, is that really all it takes when you really when it all boils down to it no you have to learn you have to be smart you have to acquire knowledge you have to be wise but you will learn all this stuff along the way it starts with consistency once you do learn whatever it is that you need to know about your business Hold on to that. If you learned it and you know it's a proof, it's something proven to work, keep doing it over and over and over and over again. I listen to people all the time. Oh my God, I became successful because I was posting on social media. I went viral. Before then, I was not getting any sales. We were making $2,000 a month. And then overnight, we just blew up from one post. What's that called? Again, class, what do we call that? Consistency. It didn't just happen. They continue to show up until something happened. And just like God allowed it to happen for those other people, he will allow the same thing to happen for you in his timing. Because what you don't want to even do, a lot of people think that they're ready to blow up. A lot of people think that they're ready to go viral. You don't even have systems in place. You don't even have the right amount of staff to help you fulfill the orders if you happen to go viral. You don't have enough shipping supplies. You don't have, you know, you don't have the tools that you need. So we have to make sure that everything is taken care of on the back end first before we even want to go viral. That's a whole nother subject. We need to talk, we need to do a, a video on it. But consistency does not always feel like it's, it's it's worth it while you're being consistent. It doesn't always feel like, okay, this consistency is paying off. Okay, it doesn't always feel like that. I be wanting to quit all the time, I can't lie. It gets stressful. I shouldn't say I want to quit all the time because I don't, I ain't no quit. But there have been times where I've, I've told my husband, I, I gotta go ask the Lord if this is really what I'm supposed to be doing because I got a headache and I, I did not intend on being in this position. I was just trying to, you know, have something fun to do. I just needed some extra money. And I was turning to this big thing of me being a boss to people that I wasn't planning on bossing. You know, I I don't really consider myself bossy. I, I don't think I've ever been. I'm, I'm a boss with my little brother. That's just what brothers and sisters do. He's younger than me. Even though he's in his 20s, married with children, I'm still the boss. I'm the oldest child. <laughs> but I don't consider myself to be bossy. But 
you know, it, it's blossomed into something that I did not ever imagine that it would be. Why? You wanna know? I remain consistent. What if you start being intentional about your consistency today, right now, in this moment? What if you, you're working right now? You're making, you're making your crafts, you're making a cup, custom order for a customer, and then right now you might feel tired, you know, especially if you're in my industry and you're making bling stuff. It might, it, they cook might be taking you, you might be on your sixth hour making that cook, and you like, you know what? After this cup, I'm not taking no more orders because I don't see how it's working. I don't see how it's gonna work. What if your next customer is somebody that's gonna rock your business, flip it totally upside down. You never saw it coming. What if you quit though right now? What if you choose to not remain consistent? There's somebody else out there that's gonna get that opportunity that you could have had, but you you trying to give up. You were just getting ready to give up. Don't do it. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. While we're on consistency, do you consistently network? I consistently network. I go to events when I don't feel like going to events. I go out to meet new people when I don't necessarily feel like going to meet new people. A prime example is while we're on consistency, someone just came to the warehouse to do a video for me that I met at a networking event. This okay. is Ka. Hey guys. <laughs> and we met at a networking event, which is what we just got through discussing the power of being consistent, remaining consistent, and now we're doing a project together. I'm Ka so excited. I know, me too. So how long have you been in business, Ka? Uh, I have been in business now for a year. A year? Uh, very new. Amazing. Uh, but i networking like Ms. Crystal yes. said. Um, just asking around, who needs some video pictures done. Right. I'm willing to do it all to see where it takes me. And Kai reached out to me after the event and said he wanted to offer a free service uh -huh. to me. Yeah. But I'm paying you something today. <laughs> but that's the power of networking. You right. never know. Right. And so this can lead to something way bigger than right. e either one of us ever imagined. Right. Continue to be consistent. Right. And like Miss Crystal said, I was willing to offer my free service and mm -hmm. down the road, hopefully earn her business. Exactly. I wasn't expecting anything on my first right. Line, you know, so. <laughs> right. I gave away so much free stuff in the beginning too. It works. Keep yeah. going. So, yes. I have always been around entrepreneurs. My family is in the funeral home industry. And so growing up, my family had four funeral homes and I always at the funeral home. My mom was a secretary and funeral director at the time. And so I spent countless hours at the funeral home around business. And that inspired me to someday become my own boss. I, it was one story you was telling me, particularly when you was at the funeral home, and I thought it was brilliant of a kid at that time. You were selling bracelets or something. Tell, tell us about right. that. So because I was at the funeral home all the time, I was always bored. My mom was the secretary, so when everybody was out of school on Thanksgiving break, Christmas break, summer break, I was at the funeral home, and I would be so bored. And so one day my mom went on lunch, and we stopped at Family Dollar. At the time, they had like uh, these packs of kid plastic bracelets. It was like maybe 30 in the pack for $1. My mom allowed me to buy the bracelets. I brought the bracelets back to the funeral home, and I set up, well, some of the workers at the funeral home set up a table outside and as cars were <laughs> passing by i was holding up this sign that wow. said bracelets one dollar bracelets and i had a few people who actually stopped and bought bracelets and one specific lady her name is glennis gordon she bought my bracelets she bought multiple bracelets and i might have been maybe seven six or seven at the time and i would literally see her at church and events in the community and she would literally wear the bracelets. And she would see me and she would shake her hand and she would say, I got my bracelets wow. on. So yeah, my love for entrepreneurs, entrepreneurship started even as a little girl. So it's safe to say that the foundation of entrepreneurship, being a business owner, was just in you. And now yes. you've branched it off to Crown Crystals in. and Crystal yes. Glaze. And now also business coaches on that tree. Yes. Wow. I don't necessarily like to call myself a coach. I like to be, a, I like to consider myself a mentor. Wow, it's beautiful. What's the message you would like to give out to 
to the people that's trying, that want to do it. But like, I just can't, it's, it's like, it's always tomorrow. I'm gonna start later, I, I need to save up, I need to do more. What's the message to the people that's like, they're scared, they're right at the edge, they're scared of failure, they're scared of fear. What's your message to those people out there? So making it to your next level, even starting a business is not as difficult as it may seem. However, the journey can be extremely tough, difficult to navigate. And so what I like to always say, consistency is key. It's cliche, it sounds cliche. People say it all the time, but consistency is key. Consistency is free. The only way you lose is if you choose to quit. Had I not remained consistent, I would not be where I am today. So it may not feel right, it may not look right, it might not even feel like things are happening for you, but right when you're ready to quit, when you're ready to give in, my grandfather would always say it's always soon to quit. That might be the moment where your biggest paying customer comes and shows you to other people in business. So do not quit, consistency is what it takes. Wow, I think that's so amazing. And y'all, just so you know, that's mine. Have a good one.